Alright. Should we try this at least? Yeah. Okay, so what's your thought? Well let's plug in the plane Z that entire equation to the side. Okay, so if I want to find the intersection between a cone and a plane, I have a plane set up as Z equals. Mm -hmm. So I should take that information and plug it into the cone equation. Cramp it into the cone and see what you get. Okay, so I got 2x squared plus y plus 2 squared is x squared plus y squared. Okay, and what? Foil. Foil. Foil? Yeah. So, yeah. I'll do the easy part. 4x four four squared plus y squared plus 4. Yeah. Okay. You guys do the other bit. Plus 2xy. Plus 4. Uh, plus 4. Four. Yeah, 4xy. Four yeah, 4xy. Yeah. Well, you'll get another 2xy eventually. Yeah, yeah. that's why. Oh, plus and then plus, plus go out longer, 4x. Yeah. Plus 4x. <laughs> 4x. Plus 2y. Plus another 4x. Yeah, there's another. And Do you guys have a system for this, or are you just like randoing through it? We're just randoing. Well, well, it was kind of tough. Uh, so I took the annoying terms, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm hoping we did 4x squared plus 2xy plus 4x. Uh -huh. Right, that's multiplying the 2x through 1. Yep. <laughs> so that was this one, this one, this one. And then when you multiply the y through, there should be a 2xy. Y squared, y squared, a y squared, 2y, a 2y, and now we should have, and then you should multiply the 2 through, so 4x, 2y, four four two two and 4, 4x, four. 4, four 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 and 2, and one more 2y, another, and a 4, we already had the 4, I think I'm good, no, you, uh, oh, four. you do, okay, okay, so I got all this stuff equals x squared plus y, x squared plus y squared, uh, okay, then what? So combine combine like, like terms. terms okay. The x squared, y squared, and the so y some of my like terms are easy, right? Yeah. Which like term is easy? 4x, 2xy, 2xy. Yeah, 2xy, 2xy. Okay, so fine. We can do the hard one. <laughs> so you got a 4x squared over here mm -hmm. and a negative x squared from the other side. So I got 3x squared left. I got a y squared and a y squared. They cancel. Those cancel. Mm -hmm. So, so far I've dealt with those bits. And then you yeah. got 4xy. And then I got a 4xy. And what else? 8x. And 8x. 4y. A 4y. And 4. And a 4. Equal and zero. this is equal 0. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What do you notice about this thing? It's fucked up. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> yeah. You guys see that? Parabola? Wait, what? X squared. So, if I solve for y, right? Uh -huh. So, I'm going to keep this bit and this bit. I'm going to push everything else to the other side. Yeah. So, I got four xy plus 4y is what? Negative 3, negative 8x. Negative 3x three three squared yeah. minus 8x minus, minus 4. four. Minus four. You can take out a y on the 4y on the other side. Take out a y. So yeah, it's you can do a 4y. Four 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 yeah, you so can factor a 4 to you. But I really want to solve for y, right? So yeah. I'm going to factor a y. Then yeah. what else have I got there? 4x. Plus four. 4x plus 4. Divide that out. So I'll divide that out. So I'll get all told here y is negative 3x squared minus, minus 8x 
minus 4 over 4x four plus 4. 4x four plus 4. Which yeah. is categorically what kind of gadget? Mm. Mm. And, well, I mean, it's a rational function, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got a vertical asymptote at negative form. Yep. Right? But of course, that's just y in terms of x. You guys see that? Yeah. Okay, so what's your parameti parametizing variable here? What's the variable everything else depends on? x. x? Right? Yeah. Okay, so let's write down our parametric equation. Okay, so what do I want to call it? Um, uh, S X of T or S of T? True. So S of maybe T. Why am I thinking T this time? Because it's sort of like yeah, there's not really a circle going on, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm thinking, all right, S of T is stop. So I'm going to need a bigger. I need a bigger space. Okay. What's the first coordinate for S of T? X. Just X over X. So what am I what am I using as my parametizing variable? X. X. So just X, T right? for the first one. Plug everything in terms of X. So I should put uh, T in for the first one. Okay. And then so then what's the second variable in terms of that funky equation that right there negative with t. t. Yeah, it's that with t in it. So it's negative 3 t squared minus 8 t minus 4 over 4 t plus 4. Hmm. Okay, so something really messy happens that t is negative in. 1, right? So then we don't yeah. need to evaluate because the evaluate that you just plug in those for the z equation. Yeah, and then change everything to t. t plus yeah, so I got 2t plus this. Yeah, we can. Plus. Plus. 2. Plus 2. So to know that it's not going to be circles, you have to physically draw it? Or oh, that's fine. Right. Yeah, so what's going on here? Like. How do I try to draw this or think about Instead this? Instead of using, because we didn't use thetas because we knew it wasn't going to be a circle, but to know that, would we draw it out? Or? I kind of could see it right here. Right, I knew what z was in terms of x and y. Mm -hmm. Once I got to the point where I knew what y was in terms of x, I knew I wasn't going to need a circle anymore, because I have, strictly, right? Mm -hmm. If I know what x is, then I know what y is, then I know what z is, too. Okay. So everything depends on x. I'm just going to start with my parameter var variable in x, and then everything else is going to fall right out. If I could solve for everything in terms of y, I'd do the same thing, but I'd put the parameter variable here, and then the other stuff in the other two. Okay. So here's a question. What the heck is up with t is negative 1? So, Kaz, do you have your picture up? Yeah. It's not part of the cone, right? I just want to. So I want to point this at this. But if you, you guys probably can't see this, but there's a cone and a, pret or and a plane slicing through it, right? And what happened was, my. Yeah, go take a look at Kaz's calculator. My plane sliced through like this. You guys see that? Okay. So, on the picture, right, it's not showing another intersection. But does it have one? Eventually. On the other side of the cone, right? If there was one. Yeah. So, either, right, either this thing is steeper than this, in which case it's going to hit way down here somewhere. Or it's shallower, in which case this thing will give you an ellipse, right? Yeah. Okay. 
I know I don't have an ellipse because I didn't have a y squared. You see that? So what happens at t is negative one? Half of this is the positive, or the t is bigger than negative one, and the other half that I can't see is the t is smaller than negative one. You guys see that? It's two pieces. Yeah, so of course it has to jump from one to the other. That's what that vertical asymptote is. Does that make sense? Wait, so what happened? Like, what's going on is there's a, a hyperbola up here and another one down here. Oh. And of course, for the t variable, right, it can't run this piece and that piece at the same time. So it has to run this piece and then jump to that piece. You guys see that? Oh. That's really what's going on with that vertical asymptote. Someplace in there, right? We've got some kind of a vertical asymptote like this, right? And then it's kind of bending those onto these two hyperbola, or the two components of this one hyperbola, I guess. Cool? Mm -hmm. That's actually a really neat interpretation for a vertical asymptote. Questions, thanks? Nope. So here's the other half.